At the heart of the system's control is the main shaft's electronic clutch, which is commanded to open and close based on pulses or counts from the external encoder. Now, let's take a look at how the clutch opens and closes based on the photoelectric sensors. The first sensor is represented as PX0 to the motion controller. The second sensor is PX1. An illustration of the actual feeder mechanism has been left out to simplify things. However, you can picture PX1 sitting perpendicular to the movement of the pink card passing through the feeder. Right now, nothing is moving, which is why the clutch is open and the servo is off. Through the use of an address mode clutch, we can command the clutch to open or close based on addresses from the external encoder. The first step is to stage a pink card so that it can be successfully fed on top of a yellow card. So let's move the card now until it hits PX1. Immediately, as soon as PX1 turns on, a clutch off address is calculated. The servo continues to move until the off address is reached. Now, in order to move this card at the right timing to be placed on top of a yellow card passing down the conveyor, a clutch on address must be calculated. This can't take place until the motion controller detects a yellow card, however. So let's move a yellow card down the conveyor until it hits PX0. As soon as PX0 turns on, a clutch on address is calculated based on this mark registration point. The clutch then closes at the on position to begin feeding the pink card. You'll see that the pink card is then fed directly on top of the yellow card to be carried away by the conveyor. The calculation of the on and off addresses requires some adjustments during initial setup. But once in place, this provides accurate control regardless of the operation speed. Here is the SFC code to control the clutch. Without going into too much detail, you can see that block G71 waits for PX0 to turn on. This results in calculation of the clutch on address. Once the servo is on, a pink card is being fed and the system waits for the next pink card, or for PX1 to turn on. This in turn calculates a clutch off address. This then repeats itself. Included as part of the solution is a test mode that allows you to control the system without an encoder. This is ideal for testing in a lab or for proof of concept. The SSC program used to control the auxiliary clutch and servo motor is called feed auxiliary and can only be operated while the main clutch is open. Additionally, the auxiliary clutch and servo motor can be used to provide speed adjustments during test mode or during normal operation. The algorithm used to increase or decrease the speed is included in the Speed Adjust SFC program. Changing the speed of the servo provides extra flexibility during operation and allows for minor tweaking of the system. A special routine has been included to eliminate system error automatically. This helps to ensure repeatable results every time. Essentially, what this comes down to is accurately calculating the clutch off address in order to stage cards at the appropriate position every time regardless of the speed the servo is following the encoder. The code shown here illustrates how mark registration is used to do this. Also included with this solution is a routine that constantly checks the system for errors called error check. When an error is detected, both of the clutches open and all of the SFC programs stop simultaneously. Once the system is ready to go again, the system is cleared and restarted. The following screens have been put together for a GT15 HMI connected to the MRMQ100. The GT15 series is convenient for connecting multiple terminals to an MRMQ100, and it also provides data logging and advanced monitoring of the motion system. Additionally, the motion program can easily be backed up with the touch of a button through the GT15 terminals. The home screen provides mode selection between auto and auxiliary, and it also allows you to home the machine using a dataset routine. Once operating in the auto or auxiliary modes, minor adjustments can be made to the start and stop positions for the clutch on and off addresses. The speed of the servo can also be adjusted on this screen. As with any other application solution from Mitsubishi Electric, a monitoring screen is included to monitor the machine's status. This screen provides information on the motor speed and allows the operator to clear errors and or reset the system. Alternative solutions come in several varieties. Instead of a GT15 series HMI, 
a smaller GT10 series terminal can be connected with a serial connection to save cost. This terminal also provides green or red-white backlight options for better visibility on the machine floor. Instead of using a single-axis MRMQ100 motion controller, a Q170M CPU standalone motion controller can also be used. This provides additional flexibility for mark registration programming, along with the connection of an expansion rack for control of additional I.O., networking, etc. Up to 16 axes of servo can be controlled for other parts of the machine with this controller as well, if needed. Another high-end solution is the Q172D or Q173D motion controllers for 8 or 32 axes of control. This is more ideal for multi-axis feeder solutions, however. These higher-end servo motion controllers allow you to connect an external absolute encoder, unlike any of the other motion systems from Mitsubishi Electric. A range of servo motors from 50 watt to 55 kilowatt is also available. So depending on the size of the feeder system and the load being passed through it, end users have a wide selection of servo motors to choose from. For further information on the Mitsubishi Electric solution for high-speed feeder single-axis machines, material can be found in five separate components. A double-page quick reference guide, a detailed application note, complete programming files, images and movies, and this presentation. All of this material is available on the MEAU website at www.meau.com. Just click on the Industry Solutions link to find your way to the material. And that brings me to the end of this Application Solutions webinar. I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.